Bueno, ya lo tenemos con nosotros y está acá eh, Kelly, Kelly Coughlin, eh, es mi contador personal, un hombre que sabe muchísimo, eh, tiene muchísimos conocimientos sobre el tema de los taxes, anda muy ocupado, por eso a veces puede, no puede, es difícil traerlo al programa, pero aquí está con nosotros, así es de que Kelly, welcome a uh, Bici, ¿eh? Thank you, Mauricio. Always glad to be here. Sorry I've missed the last couple, but I got jammed, and I'm excited to be here, though. Thank you. Okay, so the deadline uh, for to filing taxes is uh, next week, uh, the 17th. Yeah, no, May 17th, no yeah. No change, no change. yeah. No right. va a cambiar el deadline para los 17. What happened when people miss the deadline? Yeah, if they don't can do it, what is the option? ¿Cuál es la opción para las personas que no hagan los taxes antes del 17 de mayo? Well, um, the best thing to do is just file an extension. And um, you, they can do that by paper if they want. They can fill out their name, address, take their tax return from last year, just fill it out, um, estimate taxes due. They probably don't know anything about what, what the tax is going to do. Just put zeros on there. At least get something in the mail to uh, file the tax extension if they don't have someone to do it for them. Si no pueden hacer los taxes hasta el 17, antes del 17 de este mes, entonces pueden eh, ustedes eh, radicar una extensión decir que lo van a hacer mucho más adelante y entonces lo pueden hacer. Um, Kelly, I have a, the, the big question that I have for you today is um, uh, the president, Mr. Biden, already said that uh, he's going to increase the taxes for the wealthy, for people who's making uh, over 400,000. That change will at the end affect everybody or what's going to happen? Le pregunto a Kelly que el presidente Biden dijo que va a subir los taxes a las personas millonarias, a, a los que ganen más de 400 mil dólares, y le digo si eso sí va a terminar afectándonos a todos. Well, it's a big question, Mauricio. Um, it's a big, important question. And um, the answer, in my mind, the answer is easy. It will affect everybody. Um, they tend to act as if it's going to just impact the wealthy, but ultimately high taxes affect everybody. And you come from a country and many of your listeners come from countries where, um, high taxes is the norm and it really stifles economic growth and um i think it's a it's a it's a movement towards socialism it's a movement for um in a direction that i don't think many of your listeners would be in favor of the thing that i respect about about many of your listeners uh hispanic people is At their core, they are a hardworking uh, community. And, yes, um, and those people, they don't want handouts. They don't want government intruding in their business because you guys come from countries where government is overreaching. And I think these are movements towards an overreaching government. And uh, I don't think that's good for anybody. Yeah. Uh, en pocas palabras, Kelly dice que sí, el aumento de los taxes para los millonarios va a terminar afectándonos de alguna manera y es una forma de este tipo de gobierno de izquierda o casi socialista de querer eh, meterse de alguna manera en el bolsillo de todos nosotros. Eh, dice que venimos de países donde los gobiernos eh, tienen mucho que ver en todo y que realmente pues eso no es bueno, ya lo hemos explicado aquí en el programa. Uh, tenemos una pregunta justamente de uno de nuestros televidentes. Uh, Marlene Silva is asking you, Kelly. Uh, one question. Um, are we going to pay taxes on the uh, stimulus checks that we are getting? No. No tax on stimulus checks. No, no, no hay que pagar taxes en los stimulus checks. 
Um, another question, Marta. Uh, she already filed the taxes, but she needs to make a correction. Also, she has to do the correction before May 17. No. What is the correction? ¿Qué clase de corrección, Marta, la que vas a hacer? Yeah. But if you file the taxes, uh, Kelly, you can make the correction after, or they have to be. You before? have up to. You have to make. You can make your correction. It's called an amendment. You can make that correction, that amendment, up until three years. Wow. Okay. So you have three years to do it. Three years to get it corrected. Yes. The correction. Okay. Um, okay, one more question. Kelly, what's the, uh, one of the best, I was talking in the last segment and before you came on the show, um, I was talking about uh, uh, savings and how we should save for our retirement in uh, places when we have um, favorable taxes. So, well, so we don't have to pay, we don't have to share uh, all the blessings of many years of savings with the government. Um, mm -hmm. which one will be one of those vehicles that we can save without worrying too much about taxes? Le pregunto, ¿en qué partes podemos ahorrar sin preocuparnos tanto de compartir todos los ahorros para nuestro retiro con el gobierno? Okay. Um, I think I'd put them in, in uh, two categories. One is traditional retirement assets, 401ks, IRAs, 403bs, you know, traditional retirement vehicles. The other is um, one of the one of the 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 benefits of life insurance tends to be if you structure it properly, um, the government tends to stay away from messing around with of uh, existing life insurance policies. Now they might they might try to change some of the taxation. There are some tax benefits that life insurance offers that they might try to change down the road, but investment vehicles that use life insurance, whether it be death benefit and or annuity type structures, They're a pretty good, you know, relatively safe off limits uh, right now. Sooner or later, they'll probably come to come after them. But right now, they, they're not. Yeah. Uh, Kelly dice que de las buenas formas que hay para ahorrar eh, sin preocuparse mucho de los taxes son los eh, 401k, 403b, eh, los seguros de vida eh, de acuerdo a cómo se estructuren bien. Y dice que nos dice que una preocupación es que tarde o temprano el gobierno va a tratar de caerle encima a los seguros para tratar de sacar a su tajada, algo que por ahora no está pasando. Pero bueno, seguiremos hablando de ese tema. Ok, Marta is uh, writing, she said the correction she needs to make is uh, she forgot to add one, uh, a W-2 form. So that's the correction. She needs to resend it or attach it, something like that. Yeah, she she uh, should amend that. As a practical matter, the IRS will pick that up and they will correct it for her um, and send her an adjustment. But if it's if it's a significant amount, she should go ahead and do it. If it's a small amount, I would just let the IRS go ahead and do it, and they'll send her a a, a correction and might charge her a small, some interest and maybe a small penalty, but um, it kind of depends on the amount. But yes, yeah, she, she would be expected to amend that W-2. Bueno, ahí está Marta, la respuesta de Kelly. Eh, tienes que hacer el amendment o la corrección y eh, enviarla y de pronto te pueden cobrar un penalty de acuerdo a la corrección que hagan en los números eh, ya después de sometidas a W2 que te faltó. Bueno, Kelly, uh, last question. A Blanca is asking, I think this is perfect for you, because a Kelly, cuando lo conocí, fue porque me arregló un problema de estos, eh, no porque debía, sino porque ya había pagado y no aparecía la plata que yo le había pagado a la IRS. Por eso alguien me recomendó 
a Kelly y por eso fue que lo conocí. So Blanca is asking, we own 15,000 in back taxes. Is there a way to negotiate to pay? Oh, está en inglés. <laughs> you can read it. Sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. So what's the answer? I'm, I'm the, I was saying in Spanish that you are the perfect for these kind of cases. Yeah, uh, Blanca, definitely. There, there are ways to negotiate that. There are different tactics that we take depending upon your situation. Okay. Uh, one more question. Marco Salinas pregunta, Mauricio, uh, do we have to report a uh, withdrawal from the 401k uh, even if, if we already pay taxes? Yes, you, you have to report that. And then you get credit for the taxes that you paid that you had withheld from that. Um, but in this, if you took it out in 2020, you have the choice of paying tax on a third of it this year, third of it next year, and a third of it the following year. Yeah. Sí, Marco, esa es una muy buena respuesta. Depende eh, cuando lo sacaste porque hubo ventajas con los eh, estímulos que dio el gobierno para pagar los taxes divididos en tres años. So hay que ver exactamente cuándo lo sacaste, cómo lo sacaste eh, para pagar esos taxes. Pero sí tendrías que pagarlos. Um, ok, por ahora es todo. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Um, I know you are really busy because you are in the season right now, uh, finishing this week. So after May 17, Uh, when you have more free time, you are welcome to the show because uh, you know a lot and we like to share all those, uh, all that knowledge with our listeners. Gracias, Kelly. Okay. Thank you. All right. Estaba diciendo, Kelly, que muchas Ciao. gracias porque la verdad, chao. La verdad que sabe muchísimo y a mí me encanta hablar con él. Yo hablo seguido, constantemente con él por teléfono cuando no está tan ocupado y la verdad que es un gusto hablar con él por sus conocimientos. 